Hello. Thank you for your kind invitation to the Greek Economic Forum. I would like to congratulate you for your initiative and I believe it's time for us to look ahead into a more prosperous and optimistic future. Today I would like to share with you a few thoughts about the role of science in policy making, especially in our times when we depend on science for our health, nutrition, transport, entertainment, communication and really every facet of our everyday lives. Undoubtedly, while the headlines are really devastating around the world nowadays, at the same time, the trade lines of developments are more than promising. Today's staggering reality is that more than half of the world's wealth is owned by just 1% of the population as global inequality soars and holds back the fight against global poverty and hunger. Complex problems sometimes demand complex solutions or a more comprehensive, earnest and holistic approach. But at the same time, we are in the early stages of an era of technological progress that is realized at such a fast pace that seemed inconceivable just a decade ago. And that's what makes me optimistic, but also mindful of the challenges that we are about to face and the changes inherent in government planning. I would like to share with you some inflection points that indicate that once we are able to adopt the innovation agenda, we will improve our quality of life while maintaining a human-centric perspective. So my first point is the Internet of Everything, where ubiquitous information combined with AI systems and cloud computing can transform our way of living, as well as the dematerialization of products, where no material is used to deliver the same level of functionality to the user. For example, our cell phones has dematerialized the GPS devices and digital cameras. So these concepts can transform the public sector, for example, diminish the bureaucracy with the use of artificial intelligent online agents that can provide you with all the information you need before you even know you need it. Some forward-thinking governments have seized the opportunity to revolutionize their educational systems with online interactive content. They have introduced health telemonitoring in remote areas, and they have used integrated sensors that have given rise to smart water management, conservation solutions, and traffic control in overpopulated cities. Second, a paradigm shift in productivity occurs with robotics and renewable energy. What started as a natural extension of automation 60 years ago has now spawned numerous new vertical markets. Robotics will render labor a far less significant component of overall production costs, allowing more expansion, therefore making us completely independent of geolocation. Countries whose economy is based on cheap labor will have to revisit their thinking, Robots will enter every aspect of our lives. They will be doing our household chores at night. They will assist physicians in performing more accurate and safe surgeries and intuitive diagnostics. They will be a casual support for elderly people. And it will be unthinkable for humans to drive their own car, while autonomous cars and drones will become common vernacular. Next, 3D printing technology will give us the ability to manufacture anything, anywhere, one layer at a time from lighter, more efficient plane parts that could save fuel on your flights and mechanical leap prosthetics to 3D printing whole houses, 3D printing food in remote environments and even space colonies, and 3D printing tissues and artificial organs for transplantations. Finally, stem cell technology, regenerative medicine and synthetic biology will reinvent medicine and I think it will also reinvent what we think as normal. Individualized medicine with stem cell biobanking and bio-nanotechnology will significantly alter the efficacy of therapeutics. We will be tissue engineering our transplants. We will be able to cure with gene prenatal therapy complex disorders and syndromes in babies even before their birth. And we will have extended human lifespan. With these points, I would like to draw your attention on how critical it is to connect the dots between research, technology policies and public governance. It is evident that technological turbulence and disruption are not easily predictable. This sort of innovation agenda doesn't rely on politicians who think they can predict the next new thing in the grip of utopian visions. The roots of great innovation are never just in the technology itself. They're always in the wider historical context. They require new ways of seeing. The merger of these fields set off a cascade of innovations producing not only new products and management styles, but also a new reality that no country, no matter how poor or wealthy, can escape. This isn't to say that we won't still face huge problems in the areas of pollution, corruption, and totalitarian governments, but we still have to face these problems with rigor. 
And I feel that it's useless to think about the pace of change without understanding where the change agents are. For me, the youth of today are our powerful change agents. They are the root of grassroots movements and have put flesh on the bones of social entrepreneurship. And it could be that some of you might be thinking that there is this part of the youth that has been raised in the midst of the deepest recession and has lost hope in their life's trajectory, putting the blame on their ruined futures, on the older generations for their corrupt political system and blind social and environmental policies. However, although this frustration at certain instances might be justified, there also this, there's also this other half of the youth, this youth that has quit complaining, that, that has focused into driving innovation for sustainability and are convinced that they have the intelligence and commitment to turn things around. Science must be at the core of our national endeavor and we are able to place and to translate uh, science into smart investments and public policies by regenerating civic engagement and designing for social good. Our nation's future depends on the quality of its thinking and its leaders. Thank you for your attention.